Good evening, and welcome to the sixth annual National Empowered to Serve Business Accelerator. I'm Nancy Brown, Chief Executive Officer of the American Heart Association. Every person deserves the opportunity to live a full, healthy life. That's why for decades, the association has worked to improve access to health services, housing, fresh foods, clean water, and safe places for physical activity. Lack of access largely imp impacts Black, Hispanic, and Indigenous people, as well as those living in rural communities. These populations have disproportionately higher rates of cardiovascular disease, stroke, diabetes, and other chronic conditions. The COVID-19 pandemic has shined a bright light on these longstanding inequities, and the path forward requires our commitment to transform communities from the inside out. Our Empowered to Serve Business Accelerator is one of the many ways we at the American Heart Association deliver on this commitment. We are proud to partner with community change makers across the nation. Tonight, we honor these innovative leaders, including Empowered Accelerator alumni. Now with great pleasure, I want to introduce our MC for the evening, Sharon Epperson. Dynamic in every single sense of the word, Sharon is the senior personal finance correspondent at CNBC and a highly sought after expert on financial literacy. During the Obama administration, she was invited to the White House to speak about improving financial literacy in under-resourced communities, a subject she is particularly passionate about. To the American Heart Association, Sharon is a dear friend, a dedicated volunteer, and a person we count on to share her personal stroke survival story to raise public awareness and to advocate for research funding on brain aneurysms. Sharon, as always, thank you for leading this moment for the American Heart Association. I now will turn this program over to you. Nancy, thank you so much. It is always a pleasure to join you. It is always a pleasure to be a part of whatever the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association are doing. And I am so honored to be a part of tonight. Um, you know, it's my pleasure to be here because I'm always happy to just be here. I became involved with these organizations a few years after suffering a hemorrhagic stroke. I uh, had a rupture uh, of brain aneurysm in 2016. And since 2017, it did take me a full year to somewhat recover. I have been passionate um, in my advocacy for raising awareness and raising research funding for hemorrhagic strokes, for brain aneurysms. And I'm particularly interested because this is an issue that disproportionately impacts women of color. African-American women are twice as likely as white women to have a stroke. And I'm hoping that the social entrepreneurs that we are going to hear from tonight are among those who are, will be at the forefront of closing the gap by offering innovative treatments and improving access to preventative care for all. So I've been following these candidate stories online and I cannot wait to see who will end the night with a grant. For over six years, digital tech and social impact entrepreneurs, like the candidates you're going to hear from tonight, have been building powerful partnerships that uplift community-centered solutions that change behaviors. They expand access to resources and improve long-term health by overcoming systemic challenges. These inspiring community leaders went through a rigorous eight-week curriculum where each had to identify and declare a health impact moonshot challenge, and then stress test those challenges using design thinking principles, data-driven consumer disco customer discover analysis, and craft compelling stories for fundraising and team building. And you know that sounds like a lot of work, a, a, you know, moonshot challenge for sure. We're proud to share the fact that four states and local markets, Minnesota, Mid-South and Memphis, Hawaii, and the Bay Area, hosted their own local business accelerators this year. Their first place grant recipients earned a spot in today's event. Special thanks goes to the judges that participated in these local events. And while we're super excited about our new accelerator candidates, we would like to highlight a little bit about the business accelerator and what has been accomplished over the past six years.
Six cardiologists and social workers believe that heart disease did not mean people were destined to die. These folks started working on finding solutions in 1915, and by 1924, the American Heart Association was founded. Together, they brought science, innovation, community building, and yes, entrepreneurship, to grow an organization that improved the health of millions. But their work is not complete. While there have been significant advances in technology and our understanding of heart disease and its impact, inequities in healthcare still exist. Black adults are 32% more likely to die from cardiovascular disease. Over 46% of Hispanic women over the age of 20 are obese. 49% of Asian men over the age of 20 deal with hypertension and rural populations have reduced life expectancy rates. So how do we address these numbers and help more people survive and thrive? We do it through innovation, inspiration, and community-driven solutions. And we do it <coughs> to raise up the amazing social entrepreneurs who are already out there making a difference in community health every day. That's why the Empowered to Serve Business Accelerator exists. Our goal is to connect with these innovators and empower them with the tools they need to succeed. Since its inception in 2017, the Business Accelerator has provided over $1.1 million in grant funding, trained over 120 social entrepreneurs, and held 10 successful accelerator events in the Bay Area, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and more. Along the way, the Accelerator program has empowered local entrepreneurs to identify and tackle problems in education, food insecurity, mental health, transportation, access to health care, and much more. The Business Accelerator also helps businesses owned by underrepresented racial and ethnic groups secure funding and get the training they need. We are excited to help support and scale creative solutions these visionary entrepreneurs will be sharing with us today. Get ready to be inspired. That was indeed inspirational and amazing. I cannot wait to see what exciting things come from the folks that we're going to hear from this evening. Now, before we do, though, I think it's very important that you all meet our judges. Um, they have a very tough task here, the three extraordinary innovators who um, are going to be selecting this year's recipients are amazing among themselves. Dr. Uche Blackstock. Dr. Blackstock is the founder and CEO of Advancing Health Equity. She is also an emergency medicine physician and an MSNBC medical contributor. Dr. John Dozier is the Institute Chief Community and Equity Officer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And Obi Obadike, Mr. Obadike is the founder and CEO of Ethical Incorporated. He is also a fitness expert and best-selling author. And I want to thank these judges because I know I couldn't do what they did today. We appreciate your time and support for this vital program. Now, there are 12 extraordinary innovators here with us who will each share their business stories for a chance to be awarded $50,000, $25,000, and $5,000. You added all that all up, right? It's $80 thousand dollars total in grants. Now don't forget to vote for your favorite candidate through the link in our chat box on the QR or the QR code on the screen. Voting will be open until the judge's deliberation, at which time we will hear from a special guest and we will conclude the evening by announcing the two recipients, grant recipients, as well as the fan favorite. We're going to first though meet the candidates. No Foster with Health Tech Apps. No was the first place candidate in the Hawaii Accelerator. Welcome, No. Aloha, I'm Noe Foster, co-founder of Health Tech Apps. Our story began 10 years ago with three Native Hawaiian co-founders. We are on a moonshot mission to heal a generation. And we're starting with screen eaters. Who? 
I'm sure you know a few. Screenagers are teenagers and young adults who experience much of life in front of a screen. There are 43 million in the US. The COVID pandemic pushed screenagers mental health off a catastrophic cliff. Using our app, more than half of screenagers reported feelings of anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts in the last two weeks. Alarmingly, LGBTQ plus screenagers reported significantly higher rates. Ethnicity, culture, and language for minority students profoundly shapes their identity and purpose as they voyage through life. These social determinants of health influence their decision to persist in school and graduate. Earning a university degree impacts the student's financial stability long term. We need a rocket to achieve our moonshot mission. Our heartfelt gratitude to the American Heart Association for awarding us the first place Empowered to Serve grant for Hawaii. As a result, we are building a rocket called MindCloud. MindCloud is a free app in English and Spanish and built on our published patent technology for brain health baselining. Users create short selfie videos responding to smart prompt questions selected through AI sentiment analysis. In three minutes, our AI technology captures more than 50 personal brain health data elements. Our machine learning then digests all of the de-identified data and produces data stories for our customers who are universities, employers, and federal agencies. Our customers use the data to inform and shape policies, programs, and interventions that advance health equity. We feel the momentum. Our Empowered to Serve Hawaii grant is sponsored by a private trust that has supported the education of hundreds of thousands of Native Hawaiians for more than a century. We are also collaborating with a farmers organization funded through the U.S. Department of Agriculture to assess and support farmers struggling with anxiety and depression. Many of these young farmers are on the verge of abandoning their farms. MindCloud technology and our rich data will lift rural and urban communities, heal generations of farmers, first responders, healthcare providers, military members, athletes, and students. Recently, we gathered a group of university students for a discovery session. We displayed a slide with this statement, we are on a moonshot mission to heal a generation. A young man asked, when you say we, does this include everybody or just health tech apps? Are you working with the community around you? because I want to be part of the we. Whoa, yes, yes, we are all of us. I spoke with a group of executives from Airbus, Boeing, and Hawaiian Airlines about how we are using our AI technology and rich data to advance health equity. I really ate the experience about we. Then I invited them along with their 1 million employees to our MindCloud rocket launch party on heart day, February 14, 2023. The room erupted with jubilant cheers Screenagers want to feel safe, safe with their thoughts and safe from the paralyzing fear of the known and the unknown, safe not to have all the answers and safe to explore possibilities. MindCloud creates a safe place for millions of screenagers to land as we navigate the challenges of life and new frontiers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Noe. Thank you. You're doing such terrific work. Next, let's meet Austin Avery III with Original Project Team Foundation Incorporated. Austin was the first place candidate in the Mid-South Accelerator. Hello, my name is Austin and I'm the CEO of the Original Project Team where our moonshot idea is to flip every food insecure community nationwide in the next 25 years, which equates to millions of households. Now, I know you may be sitting there thinking, that is a huge, um, matter of fact, a massive undertaking that only a passionate group of individuals would even be crazy enough to mm -hmm. attempt. Now, if that's what you're thinking, you're absolutely correct. Um, but allow me to try to explain where our passion comes from. For the sake of time, I'll say that our passion um, originates from the fact of me spending way too much time dodging um, foreclosure agents and taking cold showers as well as not to mention the life-changing um, event where my now six-year-old son Josiah and I were diagnosed with PKD, which is an incurable um, kidney disorder. So living a sustainable lifestyle as well that is infused with healthy eating is near and dear to our hearts, but not just for our family. 
Now, we intend to accomplish our mission by establishing beautiful, properly managed, virtual zero waste sustainability hubs in the heart of overlooked and underserved communities, then leveraging those hubs to inspire, then empower the residents to become a part of the change and or provisions they wanna see. Now, I know I just said a mouthful, um, but basically what that looks like, how that plays out is we go into the aforementioned overlooked and underserved communities, we locate a blighted piece of property, preferably in the middle of houses in a neighborhood, and then we erect a sustainability hub, and then we turn our yards into food production sites. Once we do that, then we also leverage those hubs to aggregate healthy nutritional food from our food partners, restaurant partners, and then we distribute the grown food as well as the rescue food through our existing um, food fulfillment network and our free complimentary neighborhood cafes. Now, if you hear that strategy, you, it goes without question that that takes, um, you have to establish key partnerships with a national footprint. If we are going to accomplish what we want to accomplish, you have to establish key partnerships with a national footprint in the construction, in the real estate, and in the food production industry. Um, luckily, not luckily, we're grateful and proud to say that we've already done that. Um, and we've literally started to um, make success and deploy two sustainability hubs in two food insecure communities within the Memphis area, which represents approximately 60,000 residents. And on top of that, we are also um, in the process of having noteworthy exploratory discussions with individuals in the Mississippi Delta, the Mississippi Gulf Coast, as well as St. Louis. So we're well on our way. Um, but the American Heart Association, a grant from you all, would empower us to continue streamlining our operations in the form of getting access to some well needed, um, much needed um, refrigerated truck and transportation, as well as enhancing our existing free mobile app um, to better track our touch points between our partners and ourselves and our food fulfillment network. But it'll also do more than that. It'll also allow us to produce top tier um, marketing materials such as highlight reels of our activities, pitch decks that will allow us to explain our um, mission and vision and moonshot statement at a glance, um, as well as top tier high school based and college based curriculum um, that would allow us to start teaching these hungernomics ideology and principles in the high school and colleges, which is what our partners are, are craving for. Wow, what a concept, teaching hungernomics. <laughs> Very important, Austin. Thank you so much. We now have Longsha Lu with Vita Innovations. Longsha, the floor is yours. Hello, my name is Longsha Liu. And today, I would like to introduce Vita Innovations, a medtech startup with a moonshot to advance the future of emergency medicine. I'd like to begin today by talking about the emergency department. I think at one point in time, we've all been there before, perhaps know the experience through our family and friends. More importantly, I think we've all heard or personally experienced the agonizing and frustrating hours-long wait inside a crowded waiting room, unmonitored, unattended, and given the perception that we are not being cared for even as our conditions deteriorate. Unfortunately, this situation is an everyday reality. In 2016, the American College of Emergency Physicians published a study stating that over 90% of EDs routinely report private conditions, resulting in increased operational inefficiencies and concerning consequences on ill patients. Flash forward five years to today, this situation has only continued to worsen, inflicting tragedies for patients and providers alike. Something has to change. Something must change. And at Vita Innovations, we offer a solution to invoke that change. That is why we are proud to introduce Vital Mask, our patent pending silicone smart gasket, intended to synergize with any existing mask to measure key patient vitals, including heart rate, blood oxygen levels, body temperature, and respiration rate. With our software application, we offered a streamlined platform for nurses to view all patient data at a glance while actively tracking changes in patients' urgency of need through our priority scoring system. 
Moreover, the automation and respiration rate collection in particular cannot be overstated in its value to clinical decision making, as the vital sign frequently is underreported or inaccurately measured, despite oftentimes being a better predictor for cardiac arrest and heart rate and blood pressure, and with respiratory failure being the most common primary cause of admission to intensive care. Lastly, for the first time, continuous sleep vital monitoring will be used to reprioritize patients as they wait in hospital waiting rooms. With Vital Mask, we are creating a new niche within this $36 billion global patient monitoring device market with a compound annual growth rate of 8.6%. Our $1 billion serviceable addressable market is supported by our base model costs and the recurring revenue from the disposal injection molded gasket seals. Since our, injection, since our inception 18 months ago, we've achieved rapid growth, developing a functional prototype following three patents and collaborating with several hospitals for trials while creating a manufacturing supply chain to iterate your device even more. Looking ahead, we seek to evolve our technology as a smart diagnostic tool for the emergence of telehealth, specifically making use of facial features captured by a mask to diagnose cases of respiratory diseases. The $50,000 grant from the AHA would be enormously valued as it could help cover the majority of our anticipated financial needs for the next year as we aim to scale and navigate through FDA approval. On the manufacturing end, the grant will be used for everything along our product development pipeline from printed circuit board manufacturing to electronic sensors purchasing, prototyping fees, software licensing encryption fees, and silicone injection molding for mass production of our product for clinical trials. Alongside our development, we have invested heavily in building a team united under the shared mission to advance the future of emergency medicine. If you're interested in learning more, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm Long Shabu, and thank you for your time and support. Long Shabu, thank you for that innovative product. Really interesting there. We want to keep it going, though, and go to our next person, who is Larry Wallace Jr. with Black Men's Health Clinic. Larry? Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Wallace Jr. I serve as the board chair for the Black Men's Health Clinic. And our moonshot is, you know, the aspiration that we have for our goal is basically a no wrong door healthcare safety net for all men of color. The issue we've seen in the healthcare space for decades, and even now with the reports that have come out for 2022 here within the city of Austin, within Travis County, you've even seen it at the national level. There is a gap, a huge gap that continues to be there for men of color, the disparities, the inequities, have continued and they still continue here in the Eastern Crescent of Travis County, the Austin metropolitan area where we are housed at, trying to make solutions and changes for how healthcare, the system engages with men of color. It's not about services, it's not about devices, it's not about uh, technology, because we have to get the trust back, the confidence back, the, 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 the uniqueness of healthcare has to talk to men of color to get them to start using the services. So our solution is very simple. We're working with federally qualified healthcare centers. We're working with local community providers in both primary, behavioral, and social health to engage directly with the individuals and talk to them to figure out why they're not coming to the doctor. We understand what happened with the Tuskegee Institute and so forth, but it's more than that. Regardless of health care, regardless of insurance, regardless of income, they're not seeing the doctors. And why? That is why the Black Men's Health Care uh, Clinic was created, because our goal, our solution, is basically coming and talking and engaging with people, Black and brown populations, getting them into the resources that are already here in the community, not creating something new. There are systems of care that already support individuals through pay scales, there's systems of care that already support individuals who do not have income. And so funding for us, for the Black Men's Health Care, is basically using funding to help offset the additional issues that may arise when someone just doesn't meet the pay scale. When someone does meet the pay scale, but they do not have the funding to be able to pay the co-pays. And then you have the others where they may not have any type of insurance, they may not have any type of income. And even though they get enrolled into medical access programs and other local community programs, it still takes 30 days before that insurance comes into play. 
or they're on that job and it still takes 30 days, 60 days for their insurance to come into play. The Black Men's Health Clinic is here to help offset the reasons, the traditional reasons that black men and brown men do not see the doctor or are hesitant to see the doctor because one, they either don't have the financial capability, two, they just don't know how to navigate the system, or three, they have a lack of basically attention and care or concern or understanding mm -hmm. of the systems that are already in place right now. And so they're hesitant because they don't see black and brown individuals helping them to navigate the system. And so with that, I hope you will join us. The Black Men's Health Clinic is spreading the word and showing the uniqueness that it's not about new devices, it's not about new systems and so forth when it comes to how to provide healthcare better. It's all about how to get people into the healthcare system that's already established to help take them and make them better. Thank you again, I'm Dr. Larry Wallace Jr., the board chair for the Black Men's Health Clinic. Dr. Wallace, so important to raise awareness and improve education, and what you're doing is absolutely inspiring. Thank you. It's time to meet now Krissa McFarland from Patientory. Welcome, Krissa. October 6, 2022, the day our federal government said enough, no more facts and paper records or wait in six weeks to get medical record requests. This is the day they passed the bill to ensure that you can get timely access to, the, to your medical information in digital format. Hi everyone, I'm Krista McFarland, founder and CEO of Patientory, and I'm here to help you maximize the every penny of your health from your health information. Patientory is a secure health data wallet that allows you to exchange your health information data for currency. But that's not the only way you can create value for yourself. By using our service, you'll unlock endless insights from your healthcare information on how you can stay healthy or better your health and be rewarded for it. Doing these simple steps and recommendations that ensures that you're being your best self every day. I'm a first generation immigrant born in the beautiful island of Jamaica. Growing up in New York City, I saw how the hustle and bustle of work wore out those, especially like my parents that were trying to achieve the American dream. My dad was not diagnosed with a chronic illness until 10 years later when one physician decided to go through all his entire med medical records from different places he's lived to understand more in depth about his health. Not everyone has the, the ability or access to that. Inequities ex exist today in healthcare, and data is the foundation for ensuring a level playing field. The US has almost half of the adult population suffering from one or more chronic illnesses without the necessary information about themselves and the tools to better manage or let alone even know they're at risk for developing a chronic disease such as diabetes or heart disease before it's too late. We're disrupting a $10 trillion global market, creating data liquidity for key stakeholders in you in order for them to provide better health care for you over time. Your health is your wealth. Join us on our mission to supporting you as you create your life's destiny. Thank you. Thank you, Krista. That is absolutely fantastic. Up next, we have Stephen Charlotte with Soap Health. My brother and a dear friend, both physicians, lost their lives to misdiagnosis. I'm also a physician, and I nearly also lost my life to missed heart disease. If physicians can't protect themselves against diagnostic errors, who can? According to the National Academy of Medicine, no one can, as it now predicts that everyone will experience a diagnostic error. So why do over 250,000 people lose their lives each year at a cost of nearly a trillion dollars due to the 15% of all medical encounters that result in misdiagnosis? The answer is complicated, but can primarily be attributed to three reasons. The first reason is physicians are administratively burdened, overworked, and pressed for time, which leads them to often ignore obvious risk factors for heart disease. 
Second, they have difficulty keeping up with medical advances related to early disease prevention and risk detection. And finally, physicians are primarily paid to treat illness and not prevent it. According to a new study, nearly 60%, 63% of physicians reported at least one sign of burnout. This burnout is expected to contribute to making the diagnostic error problem worse. And according to a new study just released, 114 million Americans did not feel that the current healthcare system was serving them well. The status quo is no longer acceptable. My name is Stephen Charlap, and I founded Soap Health in memory of my brother and my friend to save the lives of people I will never meet. This is personal for me. No one should lose their life to a preventable disease. No one should lose someone near and dear to them to premature death that is avoidable. Doctors need help. And SOAP has developed a solution to help them. SOAP solution, referred to as the perfect medical assistant, has been issued a patent and has been clinically validated at Stanford Healthcare's Applied AI Research Group, which recently published a paper. More importantly, the perfect medical assistant addresses the three major challenges physicians face in always getting the right diagnosis. Our conversational AI-powered digital human, perfect medical interviewer, performs a voice and image bi-directional conversational patient intake better than most doctors. And by better, I mean more accurate, truthful, and comprehensive. Our risk view module, which is based on nine sets of risk assessment guidelines, including the American Heart Association's own, was developed in conjunction with experts at Harvard and Stanford to screen patients for major heart diseases. SOAP software as a service application was built to be globally cost-effective and accessible by following the five A's of equity and inclusion, which I coined. Everyone knows about accessibility and affordability, but I added acceptability, applicability, and accuracy. Hmm. Based on this approach, in a study with a predominantly Black and Hispanic patient population, there was a 95% completion rate. The application improved physicians' diagnosis by collecting 44% more actionable information, the type of information that changed diagnosis, treatments, and referrals. And in this study, it also demonstrated that it reduced physicians' intake and documentation time by 66%, offering a major boost to physician productivity at a time when it's desperately needed. SOAP has assembled a highly diverse leadership team with 200 years of healthcare and technology experience, including two PhDs, an MD, and a nursing master's in science. If the American Heart Association was gracious enough to award SOAP a grant, the money would be applied to expanding our application's usability and accessibility by further developing our multilingual capabilities and giving users the ability to choose a digital human who looks more like them and makes them feel more comfortable. SOAP is already working with several major health and physician organizations and is excited to be part of the Empower to Serve program and to pursue opportunities with the American Heart Association. Please, let's all work together to prevent premature deaths and save lives. Isn't it about time everyone had a chance to live a long, healthy life. Finally, I want to thank the American Heart Association, the Empower to Serve program, and in particular, Krista Chambers Price for all her help and support. And speaking of support, please consider helping SOAP achieve its moonshot to save the lives of millions of people none of us will ever meet. Thank you.
Thank you so much for your great work. And thank you so much for sharing your work with us. These are such inspiring stories. I, I, I'm I, just blown away by all of them and such great work and such important, innovative product services and just awareness that is being brought tonight. We're not done yet though, you know, but I thought maybe it is time for us to take a quick brain break, you know, blink your eyes a couple of times as you're looking at your screen. We have a trivia question that we want to share with you and see if you know the answer. Every year around how many people declare medical bankruptcy? Who knows the answer? I don't want you to see what I say, because if I get the wrong answer and I'm a business journalist, you'll think, what's wrong with her? So, so let's look here. And the answer is, well, um, hold on one second. I'm trying to see where it says the answer here, because I don't know the answer. Um, A, 19, a 2018 study found that due to the rising cost of health care, 7 million people were pushed below the federal poverty line. And every year, this number of people declare medical bankruptcy. You're entering your response right there. And now we're going to see, um, as we look at the calculations, as people put in their answers, whether or not you got the answer right. And the correct answer, Sharon, is 530,000. 530,000 is the correct answer. That is astounding, but I'm sure some of you got that right, and some may even thought maybe it's even more than that. Medical bills have become collection agencies' biggest business, so it's no wonder that we have such health care inequities. Right now, we're going to get back to some of our candidates. Joining us now is Jinga Oglesby Brim from Empower Healthcare. Jinga, take it away. Hello, my name is Dr. Jinga Oglesby Brim, and I'm a board certified advanced practice registered nurse with Empower Healthcare. We are a nonprofit rural healthcare clinic that focuses on primary care and women's health care in Pahokee, Florida. In situations in life, there is a saying that goes, no man left behind. When it comes to rural health in America, for some reason, this saying doesn't always apply. In the area we serve, which is known as the Glades community of Palm Beach County, Black and white, brown residents, particularly Black and brown residents, are one and a half to two times more likely to develop one of the five leading causes of death in America. There's a disparity in the access to specialty care for mental health services, cardiovascular diabetes, and women's health care, and it is unacceptable. Where we live should not impact how and what kind of quality healthcare we receive. With this mindset in place, we at Empower Healthcare want to help our community break the chains of the past to reimagine the future. In the words of the infamous Golden Girl, Sophia Petrillo, picture it, 2022, a patient living in a rural community comes into a clinic where there are not 20 other people waiting for in a crowded room to be seen and they are seen at the time they are scheduled for their appointment. Their primary care needs are addressed, and if they need a specialty care, like an endocrinologist or a cardiologist, they have access to that mm -hmm. through a telehealth program called Project ECHO. If a patient has psychological needs or psychosocial needs, they'll be managed by our comprehensive team-based approach that includes mental health, social work, and an RN. This team has will allow no patient to fall through the cracks and they are valued as a person not just a number that's right a place where patients and people can feel cared about and for the residents of the glades community are not another statistic it will help us break that stronghold of past healthcare inequalities that impact so many of the hardest working and kindest people in our country a grant from the American Heart Association will provide medications for our in-house medication dispensary so that individuals with HIV can have the opportunity to attain their medications in a private setting at a reduced cost. People without health insurance are likely to have are less likely, less likely to have a primary care provider, resulting in delayed care, less preventative health screenings, and ultimately worse health outcomes. This is what a grant 
from the American Heart Association will help empower healthcare to exonerate and neglect its community. It will allow us to help an uninsured diabetic to have the insulin they need at the right time without interrupting their treatment regime. There is a huge disparity in a woman having access to their royal woman screens in rural America. In our clinic, a woman will have a choice to have her preventative screenings. Some have reported that they have not been able to have these screenings in five or more years because either they have to drive 15 to 30 miles away to reach the nearest GYN, or sadly, the majority don't have access to reliable transportation. With your help, we will be able to also obtain necessary equipment and medical supplies to keep functioning at the highest standard so that we can support our community health initiatives that focus on diabetes, vascular health, and brain health. Lastly, but certainly not least, you will help us to support a clinic to build that comprehensive team to serve the community so that we can have a certified women's health provider so that they can have cervical biopsies if their pep smears are abnormal. Again, my name is Dr. Jenga Oglesby Brim, and I'd like to thank you and invite you to help us to break the chains of the past to reimagine the future, a brighter future in healthcare for the Glades community in Florida. Thank you. Amazing. And thank you for the incredible care you are trying to give your patients and are giving to the best of your ability every day. It's time now to meet Mohammed Kumara with InnovCares. Mohammed, the floor is yours. Hi, my name is Mohammed Kumara. I'm the founder of InnovCares, and we're improving the maternal mortality crisis for women of color. Despite spending more money per capita on maternal, maternal health efforts than any country, the U.S. is the only high-resource nation with a steadily increasing maternal and fetal death rates. The leading causes of pregnancy-related deaths are cardiovascular conditions, other, other non-cardiovascular medical conditions, and infection. Maternal, mortal, maternal and fetal mortality rates demonstrate noticeable disparities by race. Numerous maternal mortality review committees reported that 60% of the pregnancy related deaths are actually preventable. And so that's where our efforts come into place. I came to realize this problem because of my sister who passed during childbirth due to pregnancy hemorrhage and my aunt as well. So we're really focusing on addressing the maternal mortality crisis for women of color to positively impact 1 million women going through their birthing journey successfully. What does that look like? It means that a woman of color has a physician that's culturally competent, a physician that understands her uniqueness, her experiences, so that they can help come along her come along her with the right information to help her through her birthing journey. We also ensure that this woman have safe community, that they interact with each other, they will go on bike rides, we track their steps, and incentivize them for adopting healthy behavior. So th there's a whole gamification and community aspect of the work that we do. And lastly, we empower the woman with information about their overall health at home. And this includes a lot of the risk factors they're experiencing. Some of those risk factors are hypertension, which actually what killed my sister, right? Um, and my aunt. Um, some of the, if they have diabetes, how do we treat those conditions beforehand? So this report is using the AI machine learning. It shows a complete health record about the patients, some nutritional guidance for them to follow. And this report is made available to the physician before that virtual video consult that happens. So we begin with not just a video virtual consult for, for our physicians. Some of the benefits for our physicians is they go through a culturally competent training that emphasizes trauma-informed care, motivational, motivational speaking, and as well as verbal communication. And why is that important? It increases market share to reach populations that are mostly underserved. It also decreases the legal cost of, for health systems. For our physicians who use our platform, they have access to a telemedicine platform. They also have as, as access to prescribing medications, which we have an on-demand pharmacy that we, we integrate that allows us to be able to send this medication to the patient's home directly. Um, for our patients that have in-person prenatal visits, 
they're able to schedule pre um, the physicians are able to schedule transportations, book flights for those moms to ensure that they don't miss those appointments that are critical during their pregnancy, before pregnancy, post pregnancy. And I'll share a case here with Matu. Matu was one of our very first patients that came walk into our door. She was experiencing infertility, had an ob physician in Ohio. But for her, the, the physician wasn't paying more close attention to her need. So she found us, on, she found us online, booked an appointment with one of our culturally competent, high-risk maternal fetal medicine clinician, Dr. Alawadi. Those two spoke for about three to 40 minute, 30 to 40 minutes, and, they, and he told her treatment plan for her infertility, also asked us to send predator vitamins to Matu's home, which we did. And then two months after, she texted the physician, she's pregnant. Then nine months after her son, John, was born alive and well. So this is the level of impact we create. But for, but for her case, she, ex she also experienced postpartum depression, which is very real, very real for moms going through their pregnancy and even after delivery successfully. So for what we did for, to help with her postpartum depression was connecting her to a resource group that emphasized education around printed postpartum visits. But we also connected her to a clinical psychologist who helped her with her mental health condition during preg um, after pregnancy. We also put her in a group of other moms. So those moms start creating different activity levels for themselves. We have Google Fit that we integrate. They start interacting with each other, sharing information. And that helps bring her back to the love that she, she experienced during pregnancy and birthing John, which is her son. So these are the things that we're solving. We want to continue to solve some of this problem. I think the AHA program will come alongside to help support us with that. Again. The folks that we solve for this this problem is women of color. We solve we solve this problem and support support um, not only physicians and other clinicians like doulas, midwives, um, clinical psychologists. We also support. We're not also looking at supporting um, employers as as a solution for the employee to bring in maternity and family solution that is culturally sensitive um, at their site virtually. Again, we're excited. We're, we're excited for this solution, and we've served we've served about ten thousand patients on the platform. Have fifty healthcare providers using the technology right now. Um, we've also we, we did get some all the pre seed money last year from a group called Jumpstart Foundry, um, one hundred fifty k, and we are looking we're looking to grow and also looking at raising the round of one and a half one and a half one point five million six hundred six hundred k of that has been committed. So we're excited for this opportunity. Again, we're modernizing healthcare for women of color. Very important solutions that you're working on there. Thank you for sharing. Kelly Robinson from Messianic Care, you're up next. Kelly was the first place candidate at our Minnesota Accelerator. Take it away, Kelly. My name is Kelly Robinson and I'm the owner and CEO of Messianic Care. Masianic Care is a business where nurses of color that are registered nurses and LPNs have taken upon themselves to be trusted messengers in the underserved communities. During the course of the pandemic, this actually went in cycles. And initially, our thing was, how can we be a part of the solution? And so we positioned ourselves supporting food drives and food shelves with giving out hand sanitizers and masks. And that was the need at the time, as the country as a whole was struggling. And then we progressed into testing and vaccinations. And now, even though the pandemic is not over, we're in a different phase. Because during the course of that, we encountered people in their day-to-day -day struggle and their loss. And so for people to sit and have a moment to talk with someone that looks like them, we could feel the power and it gave us the opportunity to empower our people. So our relationships have been developed into such a strong bond and people who have engaged with us on several occasions because, you know, they come back, you know, for a booster after booster. And then there's this familiarity. And so we have those conversations about sustaining life now. And it's a different kind of healing. And so with this grant, 
it's going to allow me to sustain what we've been able to do and to build. We have those conversations about awareness of checking your blood pressure and what that looks like and what that means and how our stress levels affect it. Knowing how to take it correctly and jotting it down and including it in the conversations with your healthcare provider. And so this grant in allowing us to bring forth our cardiology team. We have three cardiologists on the team and they have thus far been in the community with me giving talks and the grant supports the honorarium that's required. And even though all of us would do this from the comfort of just being in the midst of our people to educate them, we wanna give it a step further in awareness and a lot of that is the core of nutrition. And so the grant would allow us to do more cooking classes. Uh, we have a nutrition team that consists of uh, two chefs, a nutritionist, and a food scientist. We've also partnered with a national chef who is really excited about being a part of what I'm drawing up in my mind as a food competition. Um, this is exciting because all of it is how do we eat and reduce sodium in our diet? Um, the awareness, the fun, and the engagement of making the lifestyle change is so valuable because we think that we just have to do things the way we've always done them. And so this allows us to impart change. And so going forward, uh, we're looking for opportunities to, you know, provide more blood pressure cuffs, provide more education, provide nutrition, support with funding as we do recipes and cooking and making it exciting. And so Masiana Care is excited to be a part of the opportunity to continue to be trusted messengers in the communities where the underserved are. Thank you so much, Kelly, for the important work that you're doing. It's fantastic. I want to pass it on now to Jamie Gonzalez. Jamie? I'm Jamie Gonzalez, co-founder and director of Big Fresh, and I'm here to make sure that everybody eats. The CDC says that good nutrition is essential to keeping current and future generations healthy across the lifespan. But most people don't eat a healthy diet. In fact, one in 10 adults eats enough fruits and vegetables every day. A variety of factors, including zip code and lifestyle choices, contribute to our lack of access and experience with a variety of fruits and vegetables. But are we making healthier choices when we can? Are we eating? Let's talk numbers. 10% of US households are food insecure, 33 million people, and that's a problem. But consider this. 90% of adults, over 200 million people, don't eat enough fruits and vegetables every day. This inability to make an empowered choice, when given a choice, is a crisis that exists far beyond food insecurity. I often hear that people won't spend money on produce because we're spoiled by distributions or because we like convenience foods that much more. And I wonder, have you worked 15 hours to only find a hamburger? Or have you been on both sides of a distribution line like I have? I've seen what passes for food. I know the pinch of not having enough, but I've never known the fear or felt it of not knowing what to do with the food that I had. You see, I have food privilege because I'm food literate. And that's why we endeavor to look beyond emergency feeding and toward long-term solutions that contribute to an equitable and healthier relationship with food. Big Fresh creates affordable access to quality produce and offers the opportunity to build community and have a variety of experiences of fruits and vegetables no matter what the zip code. From the coolers in the corner stores to the boxes on your porch to the produce at our produce markets, we are everywhere that you want produce to be. Since 2020, Big Fresh has spent over 2,000 hours creating hands-on food literacy experiences. We've partnered with over 60 organizations and distributed more than three million pounds of food throughout Bear County alone. Our produce sourced from local and national sources is found in over 30 corner stores and it's found its way into the web orders and distribution of more than 30,000 market boxes. Our produce markets 
that are now up to 12 a month, serving more than 800 people at a time, are found in schools and libraries and community centers and hospitals. We are like the book fair of produce. And let's talk about how we make this sustainable beyond the consumer. The rise of the anti-hunger movement has led to a variety of organizations wanting to join the feeding people landscape. And Big Fresh helps them be more impactful with their dollars. We've developed partnerships that create a basis of funding for our programs. And this support exists because of partners like our local heart association and our city and county governments. Our data shows that across generations, people will choose quality produce when we've empowered them with access, knowledge, and choice. And it shows that 90% of our clients over time will keep coming back to us even without subsidy. Our approach to feeding people is impacting the determinants of health and long-term health outcomes by casting a net of accessibility that fills knowledge and access and fills in the accessibility gaps and instills a sense of community and a healthier foods mindset in our everyday relationships with food. Winning this grant will allow us to build infrastructure and evolve our relationships with our partners into the Big Fresh Rewards Program, where we support need and reward choice in the same space. This program will add a layer of sustainability and will help continue to be a catalyst in changing the consumer mindset. It's amazing. It's amazing. Very impressive, Jamie. We thank you very much for sharing with us. I want to bring in now Kanisha Friend. The floor is all yours. Ask any mother you know about the day she became a mom. No matter if it was years ago, chances are she remembers every single detail from how long she pushed to the first meal she ate at the end of delivery. The truth is we are lucky every single time we hear from a woman who survived childbirth, especially in the United States where women are seven times more likely to die between delivery and the postpartum period. Of that, over 50% of women face death within the first six weeks. It's surprising that the major companies that are geared towards pregnant people focus solely on the day of birth, but we know that transformative healthcare does not start and stop in the delivery room. A vote for us is supporting a platform that reduces maternal mortality, that empowers people from pregnancy all through the first year of parenthood, and it's investing in us as the industry leader of providing a gig economy and 10Xing the monthly revenue of Reiki healers, doulas, midwives, lactation consultants, and so much more. So at this time, we learned that everyone in this room either knows someone who is pregnant or has been pregnant. What we don't know is how stressful and fearful that entire time period is. So in between the pregnancy announcement post on Instagram, <laughs> there's the mother who is frantically calling around to see who has availability for her dream water birth. There is a mother who is dodging unsolicited advice from the friend of a friend who was sharing what a bad experience she had breastfeeding. There is the mother who is blocking Facebook groups that are sharing harmful and unsafe advice such as using aluminum foil remedies for morning sickness. And this is all while staring at the pile of childbirth preparation books on her nightstand the night before she needs to get up early for the department meeting or preparing dinner for her family. Because while she may be a mother to be, she is also a wife, a student, and an employee. In the case of pregnancy, stress is not just an unfortunate situation. It's life threatening. It increases the likelihood of fatal risks and complications. And if this woman is a black woman, she is three times more likely to die while giving birth than any other race, unless we step in to deliver on our moonshot of providing power to the pregnant people. Airbloom Co. will be the first data-driven platform 
that guides first time parents in assembling a customized birth team for an informed, empowered, low stress childbirth experience from pregnancy through the first year of parenthood. Here's how we do it. After completing a health assessment, parents are matched with service providers of Eastern and Western traditions for a comprehensive support. Parents manage their birth while providers manage their clients all in one platform using our competitive organization features and integrations. The quality and depth of knowledge of our team is backed by a system of background checks, credential uploading, reviews, and through our e-learning platform that promotes continued learning. When a development course such as trauma-informed care is completed by a provider, a badge will appear on their profile, which increases their chances of being hired, and it promotes Airbloom Code's professional standards. The unique feature of our e-learning platform sets us apart from any competitors because it offers on-demand videos and preparation courses that meet needs, interests, and address evidence-based and cultural practices. If we were awarded a $50,000 grant by the American Heart Association, it would carry us through our beta testing. We would build a digital home that supports powerful pregnancy to postpartum birth experience backed by data analysis. It would compensate wellness practitioners fairly to share their expertise on our e-learning platform and in-person events, because after all, the mom community is a referral community. It would, we will be able to offer a beta membership at an affordable rate while we test our hospital, clinic, and private practice partnerships. It would support our go-to-market strategy. My name is Kenesha Friend, and I'm the founder of Airbloom Co., a digital home that uses data science to guide first-time parents in assembling a customized birth team from an informed, empowered, and low-stress childbirth experience from pregnancy through the first year of parenthood. So in case you missed it, if Match.com Teachable and Airbnb went through surrogacy and had a baby, it'd be us. Power to the pregnant people. Absolutely, Kanisha. Absolutely. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us about what you're doing. It's incredible. It's time now to meet our final candidate, Taro Pekka Alastalo with Cardio Signal. Taro was our first place finalist at the Bay Area Accelerator. Taro Pekka? Hello, everybody. My name is Tero Pekkalastola. I'm the president and chief medical officer of Cardio Signal. It's a great honor and um, and uh, privilege to be part of this uh, car, uh, Empowered to Serve uh, uh, Accelerator program by AHA. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about the Cardio Signal motion sensor technology. This is a unique innovation that has uh, over 10 years of academic research behind us, 20 plus reviewed public, uh, peer reviewed publications, and seven patent families protecting the method. This is a very unique software as a medical device, and the disruption really comes from the fact that we can turn technically any handheld device, including billions of smartphones, into a powerful heart disease detection tool uh, with this technology. The only thing an individual has to do is place the device, or smartphone in this case, on the sternum for 60 seconds, and we can collect accurate information from the rotation motion of the heart. The motion is basically detected with the gyroscope together with the accelerometer. And what we found in the last 10 years is that, uh, that all uh, major heart diseases will affect uh, this uh, uh, motion, giving us an opportunity to create digital biomarkers for various heart diseases, including heart failure, coronary artery disease, valve diseases, pulmonary hypertension, atrial fibrillation, and potentially uh, many more. Today, we're really excited. We have tested this technology with close to 200,000 patients or individuals in a real life situation. The first applications are already approved as a class 2A device in Europe. And we're really excited that the first level of FDA clearance is coming uh, by end of this year uh, for our remote patient monitoring and telemedicine platform that is based on this technology. Why we're so excited about this technology is, of course, uh, we think that we have a great opportunity to make huge impact in cardiovascular care. Heart disease is the costliest and deadliest chronic disease globally. And one big problem in the field is the disparity in getting, uh, in getting access to proper cardiovascular care. 
a low income man in the United States lives 14 years less than a high income man. And, uh, and this is largely uh, caused by poor cardiovascular health. Another problem in the field is late diagnostics. In majority of uh, heart diseases, people are diagnosed too late. A heart in, for example, in heart failure, 30 to 40 percent of, uh, of patients hear first time that they have heart failure when they are hospitalized in end stage disease. What we really need in this uh, uh, field is technological innovations that are really easily scalable and accessible by everybody in the, in the society, and also technologies that can really um, uh, widespread the, the detection capability, uh, as the current technologies are, have still a very narrow uh, capability. And this is exactly what we're doing at cardio, in CardioSignal, where we are transforming cardiovascular care by offering this very unique motion sensor technology that, that is giving us an unforeseen uh, scalability and accessibility um, and in uh, early detection of heart diseases and also monitoring heart, uh, uh, heart, existing heart disease patients. Smartphones are spread out in all layers of the society, also in third world countries. So we really think that we have in our hands a, a, a digital innovation that can really serve all layers of the uh, of the population and help us to fight fight against the disparity what we would really like to do with this grant is to initiate uh, research collaborations with uh, with our current partners and also with other potential partners in in us uh, in helping us to take this technology really into these uh, uh, underserved populations, especially elderly populations, to make sure that our technology and platform can really uh, serve uh, these, uh, these, uh, these populations that are often left uh, uh, outside of all these uh, innovations and, uh, and proper care. My name is Tero Pekalastolo. I am uh, from Cardio Signal, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, for your support and your votes and helping us to take this uh, technology to mainstream healthcare. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. What innovative healthcare technology we're hearing about tonight. There's so many inspiring ways that people are trying to deal with healthcare inequities in our society. And I thank you, Tara. I thank everyone who presented tonight for sharing your stories with us. So powerful and so very important. I'm frankly glad I don't have to judge this because I don't think I could decide between the outstanding candidates that we've seen tonight and their innovative approaches to addressing the needs in their communities, in our country and around the world. If you haven't already, I want you to go vote for your favorite candidate right now. Now voting will close in just a minute, just one minute. So please vote right now while we give our judges time to deliberate on these wonderful 12 candidates. We'd also like to take a few minutes to introduce you to an exciting new opportunity uh, the American Heart Association is providing through its business accelerator. And here to share some of the details is someone you've heard about already, Krista Chambers-Price, our business accelerator coach. Krista? Hey, everybody. We think, scratch that. We know you have what it takes to make the impossible possible. As your head coach for the Business Accelerator, which has reached in five years over 100 innovators from Silicon Valley on the West Coast to HBCUs on the East Coast. We have seen teams with big ideas accomplish the impossible, from rescuing over 1 million pounds of food to raising over $30 million in Series A funding. Now, we're also excited to announce that the Business Accelerator program has crossed a significant threshold of distributing $1 million in grants. Wow. But there are only a limited number of seats for these accelerators. And we believe that people like you who are ready to work today to improve your communities, you need support now. And we want to support you with your journey. And so... Now for something new. The American Heart Association Empowered to Serve is pleased to announce the Empowered Innovation Academy. The Academy is a flexible, self-paced, on-demand, online experience for social impact and digital tech entrepreneurs. The Academy's purpose is to give you the tools, inspiration, and confidence to take on some of this country's most significant challenges and win. Now, I will be your guide throughout this experience and a little bit about me. So for the last 25 years, I've been a brand and marketing strategist. I love what I do. 
My purpose is to ensure that no innovator is left behind. My moonshot mission is to ensure that innovators like you own your space. I've guided hundreds of digital tech and social impact teams to transform big ideas at scale and then help them craft compelling narratives, stories that invite markets, in, markets and investors to support them. Now, the tools you're going to gain from this academy will help you clarify how you define and mobilize support to solve these big problems. You'll learn how to validate the issue you see and its potential impact. You'll reimagine new possibilities as you test and prove your assumptions so that you're in a better position to design the right solution. Now, even though this experience is 100% self-paced, this course is designed to push you out of your comfort zone. Why? Because big problems require you to be at your personal best. I'm going to let you in a little secret. You see, you and your brilliance are the secret sauce to transformation. Yeah, it's you. Now, bringing your personal best into your business model isn't easy. And that blend and pulling that together so that you have a market-ready solution can be tricky. But we're going to show you how to do it. So, quick story. See, story behind you. Okay. So, an investor shared with me. What factors go into their decision to fund a company who has a big idea? Yes, a solid business model is essential. She said investing in a company actually is like horse racing and picking the right team to win. Yes, the breed of the horse is critical. It must have the right pedigree and successfully persevere through a demanding training regimen. Now, no matter how powerful that horse is, the jockey completes the chances of success. See, a horse's ability to win often lies in its jockey. They control how fast it comes out the gates. They set the pace and they conserve the energy of the horse for a late push. Now, jockeys also use a unique riding style that helps a horse run faster. They apply strategy during races. They study their competition and learn the weaknesses and strengths of their competitors. Investors want to have confidence in the horse. Oh, of course, they must. But they want to trust that the jockey can drive that horse to win. You are the jockey mm -hmm. of a potentially powerful idea. And with this academy, you will explore how to find, define, and own your unique competitive advantage. We invite you to join us and I look forward to working with you. I would love to work with Krista too. I have to work on my ideas. My goodness, what an amazing opportunity for more people to be able to get business training, to grow, scale, and take the health impact of their business to the next level. As our guest this evening, you had the special opportunity of previewing the soft launch of this program. So be on the lookout for many more details. And now... We have arrived at the moment that everybody has been waiting for. Our judges are going to be presenting the honors. First up, Mr. Obadike will be presenting our second place grant recipient. And our second place grant recipient for tonight. Congratulations to Jenga Oglesby Brim. Congratulations for the second place grant of $25,000 for all that you are doing. Congratulations, Dr. Oglesby Brim. And now Thank Dr. Black, hello. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Blackstock is now going to present our final grant. Dr. Blackstock? Yes, I am so very, very excited uh, to present uh, the first place grant winner uh, with this $50,000 grant to a Kanisha friend of Airbloom Company. Congratulations, Kanisha. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So inspiring. So inspiring. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for lending your time and your attention to learning from these wonderful community change makers, hearing what they are doing in their communities. Keep your eye on your email box for more information about the application period for the 2023 Business Accelerator and Empowered Innovation Academy. Now, you may be wondering, didn't she say there's a fan favorite? Where's my $5,000? Who won that $5,000? We're going to get to that. We're having some technical issues, but we're going to announce that winner online tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And thank you. Thank you for voting and for listening to all of these candidates. And a special, special thank you goes to our judges, Dr. Uche Blackstock, Dr. John Dozier, and Obi Obadike for their support of the American Heart Association's Empowered to Serve Business Accelerators. We thank you all for being here. We especially thank our judges for the hard, hard work they had to do to come up with the finalists and the grant recipients. And congratulations again to all grant recipients. As Krista said, you're making a difference every day in what you're doing. Please keep doing that. Thank you to all the candidates for the work you're doing in your communities. And thank you for having me host this wonderful event once again. I'm Sharon Epperson, and thank you. Have a good night.